So when you want to study the behavior of many, many particles, like you might have in a gas using physics, you've really got a couple of options. One option is you can try to track the motion of every single particle uh, that's in the gas. So this is what's happening here in this sim from FET, uh, where you have many, many atoms inside of a chamber, and we're tracking the collisions between the atoms and the walls and the atoms and each other, or, or molecules or whatever kind of particles these are. And this is a really great sim. This is one of my favorite things to do in class because you can easily add more uh, particles to the mix. You can even add uh, particles of different types. So you can have heavier versus lighter, which is pretty cool. And then it keeps track of the pressure and the temperature. And uh, you can sort of measure the volume uh, if you grab the width measurement here. This width is a, is a stand-in for the volume because obviously you don't have a volume on the three-dimensional, excuse me, on the two-dimensional stage here. Uh, and then you can adjust the volume, you can adjust the temperature, and you can watch what happens to the pressure uh, as a result of those changes, which is really cool. But obviously there's a lot going on in the background here, right? Each one of these collisions has to be modeled using conservation of linear momentum and probably conservation of kinetic energy, uh, or we need to use some sort of coefficient of restitution, something like that. But there's a lot going on here, right? And so for us to develop a code like that would be a bit much. That's why there's another option for doing this, and that's to use something called a random walk. The idea of a random walk is that instead of tracking every single one of those atoms, you're only going to track one of them and get an idea of what sort of path it takes. So this is useful if you're studying diffusion or stochastic processes or basically anything in nature where you're trying to track maybe drug delivery or something like that. And so in order for this to work, we've got to do a few things. First, we have to make a walker. We have to make the one particle we're going to keep track of. So this sphere here, this is the one walker that we're going to keep track of. The next thing we're going to do is define how many steps the random walker should take. So the way this works, in order to make an animation, I need to have a certain number of steps. So rather than keeping track of time as a variable, we're just going to count number of steps. How many times should the walker move? And so steps is going to be the maximum. Count is going to be the number of steps we've taken so far. And so our loop is going to be while count is less than steps. So we're going to keep looping, keep repeating until count, the number of steps we've taken, equals the number of steps we want to take. So this count is going to go up here. It's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to, in this case, 100. So line 13 here is just telling the code when to stop, when you've taken enough steps. Uh, as always in VPython, we need an animation rate. This does not do anything to the physics. You just increase this number if you want the animation to go faster so that you can get done with your project sooner. And then what we need to do, we need to take a random step. So let's start out thinking about two-dimensional motion. In two-dimensional motion, my random walker can step left, right, up, or down. And so I've got four options there. In order to choose between those, I need to get a random number. So that's where this little function random comes in. This is one of the best built-in functions uh, in, in most programming languages. We'll have this, or we'll have a library you can pull in. But the idea of this random function is that it gives you a random number between 0 and 1. That's sort of the default. We can modify this to make it a random number between 1 and 100, or maybe 1 and 20 if we're trying to make a tabletop role-playing game simulator, or we could make it like negative 10 to 10. Uh, we could even make it, instead of a uniform distribution, make it a, a normal distribution uh, or any other kind of distribution you want. But this is sort of the basic function is get a random number between 0 and 1. The reason we want that, the reason we want to think in terms of going between 0 and 1, is because we want to think about taking that and dividing it into equal regions, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to assign the walker a step based on that random number. So the options are to step right, meaning I increase the x component by 1, or step left, meaning I decrease the x component by 1, or step upward, meaning I increase the y component by 1, or step down one, meaning I decrease the y component by 1. So I need to be able to interpret what random number means here in terms of which direction I'm going to go. 
So what I need to think about is dividing up this region 0 to 1 in four equal increments. Well, if I want to do that, if I want to divide this up into four equal increments, I want to go from 0 to a quarter, quarter to a half, half to 0.75, and 0.75 to 1. So let's put that in here. Let's suppose this first one. I want there to be a 25% chance of stepping to the right. Well, if this thing is uniformly distributed, if it's, it's got equal probability of landing anywhere between 0 and 1, then that means there's a 25% chance it will land between 0 and 0.25. Right? That's the way it has to be, right? Because that's a quarter of the region, so a quarter of my random numbers are going to end up in this little sliver. But then I also need a 25% chance for it to step left, but I can't use the same range. So what I can do is say, well, let's go from a quarter to a half, right? So this range has a width of 0.25, and this range has a width of 0.25. They're just starting at different points. And I suppose to be consistent, I can make this a 0 0.00, so everything lines up. That's just to make it pretty. Um, and then I can keep going with that pattern, right? I can say, well, this must be 0 0.50 going up to 0 0.75. And then I want to be able to go from 0 0.75 to 1.00. So there's nothing actually really important about the value of random number, right? I could swap these ranges around, but the important thing is I need a unique range for going to the right. I need a unique range for going to the left, a unique range for going up, and a unique range for going down. And because I'm manually changing the walker's position, it's going to automatically move on the screen at this animation rate. Okay, let's see if that works. Let's watch our random walker. So we're going to click run. Now remember, each time it takes a step in the animation, it's going to choose a different random number. So you can see first we got up, then right, then up, up, then down, then up, then right, then down, then up, then down, then left, then right, right? So it's basically, it's, it's, it's rolling a die. It's rolling a four-sided die to determine which direction it's going to go. Right? And so one side tells it to go right, one side tells it to go left, one side tells it to go up, one side tells it to go downward. And we can keep watching this. We can let it trace out all 100 of those steps. The important thing to note is that it's moving randomly. Right, Each of these steps is independently determined by this random number. There's no path that it's following. There's no like predetermined nature of this. And if we run this again, we will get a different path. All right, let's see if that works. Let's see if we get a different path this time. So we'll try to remember generically what this means. You can also scrub back and forth on the video if you want. But let's run this again. The important thing to notice that I'll get a different set of random numbers each time. Well, this is definitely different because we start out going downward, right? So on the last time, we were only in the upper half of the plane. Uh, now we're in the lower half. Uh, let's let this thing run, see if we end up in the upper half. Oh, it's going, it's going. Come on, go up, come on. All right, we made it to the upper half of the plane, right? There's nothing sacred about whether it lives in the upper half, the lower half, or the right half, or the left half, because basically each one of these steps is independent. You can almost think of it like each step, the problem is starting over, right? And as promised, each time you run this, it's going to be different, right? The probability of you ever getting the same two paths is vanishingly small as you increase the number of steps, right? So that's a probability probability of one out of two to the, excuse me, one out of four to the 100th power in this case. Uh, or if you take more steps, say you take 200 steps, it's one out of four to the 200th power. Uh, there's very slim chance uh, that you'll ever get the same pattern twice. Uh, let's try to play with this a little bit because there's lots we could do with this, right? So for example, let's suppose we wanted there to be a higher probability of the particle stepping downward than going in any other direction. We might do this, for example, if we want to simulate the force of gravity, right? We don't have gravity programmed in here. Maybe this is a vertical chamber that we're looking at. Um, so what I could do would be to increase this range, right? Maybe I make this like a 0 0.50 to 1.00. So there's a 50% chance of it moving downward instead of any of the other directions. Now, obviously, I have to change the rest here because now this range and this range are overlapping. This range here. <laughs> our third range and our fourth range are overlapping now. 
So for example, I would need to cap this at one half, and then this one needs to start at two thirds of a half. And this one needs to start at one third of a half, right? Because I now need to divide one half into three equal ranges. So this will go up to two thirds of a half. You might notice that uh, the ending value of the previous one has to match the starting value of the next one. So there's a cool little pattern there. So one third times a half. Cool, right? Because this will get me a third of the way, this will get me another third of the way, and then this will get me the rest of the way. Okay, great. Uh, oh yeah, I suppose those are one six, aren't they? It's just gonna go one six, two six, red six, blue six there. Um, so let's click this. Now let's see what happens here. So we should expect to see it go downward more frequently because there's a 50% chance of it moving downward. And we do seem to be seeing that. It seems to be drooping a little more than the other animations we saw. Obviously you would want to run this many, many times to get an idea of the trend. So it does look like this one is drooping a little more than the others that we saw. You'd of course want to run this many, many times to see the overall trend, but it does seem like this one is kind of sagging downward like that. And of course you could change these uh, to whatever probabilities you want to sort of bias the direction. Um, another thing we could do, this is vPython, this is designed to go in 3D. We could make this go in 3D, right? So we could have a something here to have it step forward. So that would involve changing the Z component by positive one. And then we could do, uh, let's see, we would need another one to have it step backward by uh, changing the z component by negative one. Uh, let's restore these to their uh, rightful places here. So we'll have one, six, two, six. I guess they are the same number, but we'll just make it cleaner here. So I have one, six, two, six, red, six, blue, six. Um, so I'll do that. We'll do three out of six. <clears throat> and you can imagine if you, you know, extend your imagination to a four dimensional world, you know, you would just have eight of these options and you would be going in increments of an eighth. Oops, too many. Four, six, two, five, six. And then we'll do, what is it gonna be? Five, six, you know what? Let's be nice and complete here. We'll call one six, six, and we'll call zero, zero, six. There we go, that's nice and symmetric. All right, let's see what happens when we run this in 3D now. So now there's a probability of it moving forward and backward. So we're going to see this thing move around in all three dimensions. So you can right click, drag this around. Again, now what I'm imagining is I can use this to model a single particle in a gas or maybe a stream or, or a leaf in a stream or something like that, because it's interacting with all this other stuff around that I don't necessarily need the details for. I can really model this as a random process and kind of get an idea of how this thing is going to move. And again, you could have the, the code repeat this many, many times uh, and get an idea of what a whole ensemble of them looks like. The way you might do that would be to wrap this whole thing. So let's take this whole thing and indent it. And we're gonna say for I walker in range zero to, let's say we did 10 of these. Right, what I would want to do would be give each walker a different color. Uh, so let's say we give them a red that's equal to, well, let's just use random, shall we? A green value that's another random and a blue value that's another random. I just need them to be different colors. It doesn't matter what color they actually are. I just want them to be different. Um, so let's call this color equals vector red, green, blue. All right, so we'll get a different one each time. Remember, each time you use the random function, it's a new number, so we're getting a new RGB code for each of these. Let's have this run uh, 10 times 100 times, and I will speed up this video and we'll take a look at what it looks like in a minute.
Well, there we go. As promised, so far we've only had one, two, three, four, five, and now we're in the middle of six. Uh, random walkers go, none of them have taken anything remotely resembling a similar path to each other. Uh, this is some of the cool stuff you can get using random numbers to study physical processes. Uh, so as always, the link to this code is available in the description below. Uh, happy random walking, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.